to a new episode of the reset button i bet you all thought we forgot about you <laughs> it's been a hot minute but we're back in the saddle we're back in the seat we're ready to give you another episode except just a slight little change here this episode i hope i hope everybody's okay with it um it, it's not a three-person show i'm so sorry it's a two-person show two-person now we'll get to the other host and you tell me if this is going to be a great show or the worst show ever. It's it's up to you guys to decide. I, I can't decide for you. You have to tell me if if the right host is here. It's up to you. But it's going to be a great night where we talk about uh, all things fighting games. We might even dabble in a little bit of news because some crazy stuff game-wise has popped up recently. That said, let's go ahead and flip it over. Who do we have? Oh, we have Mr. Johnny Chase. Can you believe it? Hey. I can't believe it. The fans can't believe it. Nobody can believe it. It's out of control no. over here. We are we are, we are missing uh, one host there, uh, unfortunately. Uh, Liz uh, could could not make it tonight. Uh, she's still recovering from uh, Dragon Con, <laughs> uh, which has been it's like a it's a massive like cosplaying extravaganza. It was probably one of the largest cosplaying conventions uh, in the United States. So. Uh, rest easy, Liz. We'll, we'll see you in two weeks' time or next week or whenever we do the next episode. Uh, but sit back and uh, relax. I know she's watching from chat right now. Uh, but yeah, rest up uh, as we'll have a lot to talk about next time. Oh, yeah, but yeah, man, we, man, always... we have a lot to talk about tonight because uh, we are on the eve of the release of Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection. It actually drops late tonight, uh, or tomorrow, depending which region you're in. And then and Sony just, of course, went back. Yep. <laughs> Man, Sony has had such a, a seesaw uh, of emotions this week. It was like, yeah, that game we released uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, we're shutting it down and we're going to refund everyone. Oh, but we've just released our, one of our greatest platforms of all time. High marks everywhere. Everyone loves it. Yeah, it's nice back. Hey, we just announced a new uh, pro console. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna cost you your house. <laughs> Plus, oh wait, we have to sell you the accessories with it too. It's oh, we firing off already. Firstborn. Oh my god, we firing off already. See, that's what I was gonna say. Two reasons, two reasons why it's good to have Johnny here. One, we're talking about fighting games, so you know Johnny and I can talk about fighting games for hours. Two, uh, we're gonna be kicking Sony in the nuts a little bit on this one, and I know that would that would break Liz's heart. So leave it to us. I think we can handle it. Because overall, even though, like I've said before, I prefer Sony over Microsoft, I prefer Nintendo over both of them. So, Sony, you're going to get what you deserve tonight. <laughs> so, let's talk about the PlayStation 5 Pro really quick so we could just get that out of the way, folks. Yeah. So, PS5 Pro, the pros of it with the Pro is this thing, console-wise, hands down, the most powerful thing I think I have ever seen in terms of a console. Just absolutely amazing, powerful wise. Um, I think they said it is sixty seven percent stronger is what they were saying than the original. I'd have to look at the numbers again. I don't know how the fuck that's possible, but something like that. I think that was the claim. Now, the real thing that lets you know that they mean some business when it comes to power is it is the world's first native eight K gaming console. Which to me is insane. Because one, my, my first question, <laughs> sir, if I may raise my hand, is why? What, what game? What game is designed to be in native AK? Can anybody name me one? I, I know somebody's going to say, well, there might be one in the pipes. When? We heard the PlayStation 5 is in the middle of its life cycle. When is the, this game coming? Is it coming in the next three years? Because we better fucking hope so. So I that, honestly like, can't find a listing that says which game is out right now that is, is in 8K. Now, the funny thing is, is that the current PS5 apparently can do 8K. They put 8K on the box. 
I think that's only when it comes I to always, movies. I always, I always, yeah, 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 it's actually, from my understanding, it's only for movies. But from my understanding, too, is that, I mean, them putting all that stuff on the box is the equivalent to someone who uploaded a clip from an MCU movie, but had to put like 4K, 8K, 180 or 1080p, 60 frames per second in that little gold standard corner, full HD on this clip. Okay. <laughs> You had to put that in the thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's insane. I mean, awesome. I love the power that they're trying to push out because you know what? It's people saying PC Master Race, you know, they got to keep on their toes when you're producing stuff like this. But at the same time, why? I don't think you really need it right now, to be honest. And on top of that, the other part with this, uh, in chat, maybe Final Fantasy Remake Part 3, I just... I don't see it. Truly, I don't. I, I mean, mean, I could be Rebirth wrong. Rebirth is Rebirth is one of the games that they have touted that will have this like like fidelity upgrade when the PS5 Pro comes out. So when like it, I don't, like how far have you gotten into Rebirth? If None at all. None. None. Okay. Now they have like two. They have their modes. Right. They have like the performance mode, and they have like the enhancement mode or whatever. I, I can't remember the exact names, but there's one mode that you know it's a solid sixty, maybe dips a little bit here, and then the other other mode where they just up the graphics, but at the cost of frame rate. Like mm. I I did that for, like first time playing Rebirth. It's on there by default. I mean, it looks beautiful, but when you turn when, when you're looking at it you're like i kind of prefer the smoother frames i'll deal with yeah. like a little bit of a downgrade in texture quality if i can you know have a smoother experience so i guess with that there it's going to be like hey remember those high texture graphics we're going to give you the higher frame rate for this now so i'm like well, that's just kind of curious but like do i really don't justify spending okay here's the thing i'm in canada so a ps5 pro is going to run a canadian about 940 dollars plus tax and that's before the stand, if I want to stand it upright, and the disk drive, which I would need because I have a few PS5 games that require a disk, and I have lots of PS4 games that still require a disk. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I think I'll just wait for Digital Foundry to put out their video and be like, hey, is that what it looks like? Oh, cool. Okay, moving on with the rest of my life. Yeah. I Even even I, who got like PS5 as early as I could, I, I can't justify it. What am I going to do with that type of power? Yeah. I, I, there's nothing I really play or even look at. Though, even to the point where, like, do I notice some stutter when it comes to some games? Sure, but it's not enough to just be like, well, fuck you, I'm paying $700. No, no that is never no, crossed this my mind. I'm not, like, flipping my desk card. <laughs> I dropped two frames! <laughs> no, no, not for that price. I can't imagine anyone doing that. And it's also that, like, just... The, like, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, a lot of journalists were talking about, like, obviously they're getting it because it's their job. Like, yes. if you're a content creator that lives off of technology, you are getting it. Don't try and argue and say, like, oh, man, this price point, da, da, da. you're getting it. Like, you're getting it day one. You have to. But, like, I gotta say, like, like I, I made the tweet, I, I put my two cents out there. I said, if this is for, like, the graphic snobs out there they're just like oh my my ps5 doesn't perform as good as my you know my my t80 or my four my 4080 um uh g g gtx i don't even i sorry i'm so I like Ma pc master is a litter i don't know the names of graphics cards yes. i don't know which one's the most powerful one out there right now i'm just throwing numbers out there but high in gpu it's good like yeah yeah you know, like they're, they're gonna say like okay like that's not running as good as if I were to run this on my high-end gaming PC and I can crank that up. Like, that's not for them because they're going to look at this and be like, well, why would I need this if I already have the high-end PC that runs all these games better than what they're going to produce? So right. it's going to be interesting to see who actually adopts this. Now, people are uh, saying that, um, at least in the States, like Best Buy and Amazon, I think all the disk drives, the pre-orders have been spoken for. That's which, wild. Which kind of sucks. And like immediately people are like, uh uh God, what's that scummy word for them? Um resellers. <laughs> resellers, yeah. Um yeah, um uh oh god. The word is escaping me. What what the hell do resellers resellers do? 
They they're uh, scalping. Scalpers, scalpers, scalpers. They're scalping. That's the word I'm looking for. They're scalping it. Yeah. yeah. They're scalping it and like they'll scalp the console too. And then if there's another person against it, they're like, oh man, I can't get a disc drive. Oh, I bought it. You're two hundred dollars. Yeah. This always happens at console launches. So it's not gonna be a big deal. So like they're gonna scalp it and then you know, hopefully people will be smart enough not to buy it and waste their money. But well, I mean I, I guess we'll have to wait the, and see. Here's the problem with that too. Like I was saying before, um, Sony's already said that this thing is in mid-life cycles. So do they really have that kind of time to be fucking around with that where everybody's scalping the thing? I mean, they had that, they had it before where that wasn't the end of the world when it first came out because, you know, there's time. You know, even if it's yeah. up to a year of that nonsense, that's fine. Now, I, I don't think that they have the ability to withstand that. And I don't think people have the tolerance for it in this go. No, not in this one. Like a slim version of your console, maybe like something that's smaller and more affordable, because like that's kind of the life of a console is like you get the first one that comes out and there's a lot of technical problems with them. And then they release their slim model or their part two model. That's like the same thing, but just cheaper and smaller and more compact. Like everyone's done this like any all the way down to the i think even down to the 2600 they, they did this like as soon as they could make smaller components because like there's a 2600 junior out there i think that sucker sold for a hundred dollars back in the day uh but yeah we only started getting into the pro series last generation with xbox one and ps4 mm -hmm. and then they had their pro consoles which you noticed a little bit of a difference as well as as far as like performance goes but I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, like, what really... Like, I think I may have noticed a difference, too, when I was playing, like, the like Gears 4, Gears 5, and they had, like, the, the 4K, because, like, they, it could do 4K. It's not quite, but it was it was close to it. Yeah, that was... I definitely uh, noticed a difference there. Yeah, that it was 4K, but it was non-native. And then, of course, the current consoles can finally do native. Uh, I think yeah. when I was able to see a PS4 Pro in action, the only time I really noticed a difference is uh, someone was playing near Automata, and I saw like the there was more grass. It was like, whoa, more grass! Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I paid three hundred extra dollars for more grass. Go me! Yeah. Look at that grass go that I can't touch or interact with. Have any <laughs> um, any importance to the overall story? Mm. It. The the biggest thing I could say, the biggest insult I could say to something like this, and I'm glad people in chat are agreeing with me, because all this time I've heard how ridiculous people are in uh, PCMR land to run out and buy these overpriced parts and then say, well, I'm future-proofing. That's what I'm doing. I'm future-proofing. It's the same shit now. They're bringing it to consoles, they're selling it to you on a plate, and they're hoping you're going to eat it up. And some people already fucking are. Yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure you I'm don't need it. Look, I, I, I need the card, and I need the RAM, and I need the SSD right now. All right, I'm going to go play Super Metroid on my SNES emulator. <laughs> Every time. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Because, <laughs> like... I, I don't... I haven't, like, stress tested my machine at all. Like, I don't know how beefy i can get some stuff i will credit though i did try playing only up and stream it at the same time uh and i did that with xsplit big mistake because i had like ate like memory like crazy so like i was getting like 15 frames a second and i Ooh. had everything on lower settings there but when i didn't have xsplit it was running okay but yeah, yeah like i i haven't really tried to stress test it much and what sucks is because We'll we'll get into it later, but like with the decisions of uh, Capcom, I've been like slowly going. You know what? Maybe I should start shifting everything over to PC or over to the Switch for all these compilations. Because, uh, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Because uh, that's part of the the fighting game section. Yeah, well, let's let's go ahead and dive into it. I think we've kicked Sony in the nuts enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, they deserve I mean, I mean, every second of it. Yeah, the TLDR of so. it is, you know. New console that you probably don't need. Uh, it's going to be way too expensive, and only the niches of the niche will buy it. And we got probably another like four or five years to the next console. If I'm, we're lucky, I don't even think they're going to get four or five years. Honestly, I think I think he got four at most. 
yeah. you're going to go out like a dummy and pay 700 or 940 if you're in Canada and other places. I suppose, okay, one last thought and then we'll move on. I suppose mm -hmm. they can use their one program where you can um, do an upgrade directly through them, where you can trade in your PS5 and go with the Pro, pay up more money. Th that yeah, might I, be I only just paying them like cutting that in half. Yeah. So you still have like $500 you have to put towards that though. Yeah, you're still going to be paying like, okay, it's $700. You're still going to be paying like th close to $400 for some, a minor upgrade. Minor. Mm -hmm. Don't do not do that. Just yeah. don't. Before before we get into the ranking, can we I just do a quick aside? Uh, this is kind of yes. Liz related content. Uh, so I don't know if you heard about this. So we always like to tease Liz because she owns a copy of Rule of Rose on PS2. Probably <laughs> one of the most expensive PS2 games you can get right oh, now. Oh, gosh, uh, it got more expensive? Time, bar, on the contrary. Um, uh, so when we checked at the time, I think I said a complete copy was around seven hundred dollars. Yes, and then I've seen it spike a little bit after that. Like people have been going to game uh, stores and seeing it like in case or like sometimes factory sales for even higher than that. Oh my god! Um, at least in uh, Europe, um, some some collectors in some stores have found new old stock of the game, like still factory sealed. What? Uh, I think they found a few hundred of uh, Rural Rose. So the overall price of Rural Rose is starting to come down now. I think it's it spiked pretty big in the PAL regions. It didn't do a whole lot moving in North America, but I just thought that was funny. That, like that popped up. It's just like, hey, uh, tired of taking out a second mortgage just to have a legit copy of Rural Rose? Well, <laughs> some people in Europe have found several hundred sealed copies of it still available. That's hilarious. It just sealed and it's bizarre. It's like the yin to ET's yang <laughs> in a way. Yeah. So ET it's was so bad I, that they had to bury still, all the copies. Yeah, Rule of Rose I, I, I is like so cherished and niche that they found it sealed. I feel I feel, there's a lot of this that happens too. Um I can't remember. I think they're called like the Super Fun Pixel Squad or something. They're like, they're like a retro hunter channel. There's a guy out in the U.S. somewhere that has a warehouse, and it's just filled with sealed games. And like, I guess it's just like leftover stock from department stores the past, and it's, they're just still sitting there. And he was just cracking. I was like, oh yeah, let me open this box real quick. Oh yeah, here's just like ten copies uh, sealed of Double Dragon Two on the NES. There's all these GBA games still factory sealed. It's just like, oh, and like how much these must go for is crazy. That is insane. No, like the most I've I've seen, and and they're not sealed copies. They're just copies that the local store is collected for. I don't know because they're never going to sell it. You walk into the retro store that I normally visit, and the first thing you see on the PS4 section is an entire row of Final Fantasy XIV Heavensward. There's no need for it anymore. I don't know why no. they have all these. They're never going to sell them. <laughs> They're just there. So if if uh, <laughs> you want about... 45, 50 copies of Final Fantasy XIV Heavens, where you come on down to Dunbar, West Virginia. We'll take care of you. Good <laughs> Lord. I, for, I, I think I should tell you, I went to GameStop today. I was actually legit trying to find a copy of uh, Concord, <laughs> like a physical copy of Concord, because I was just like, this would just be funny to have, like this sealed copy of this game I can't play and just like have it on display somewhere. Thankfully, they didn't have any there. and I didn't pull the trigger on anything else in there. But I thought I thought that would have been a funny show because like, hey, I can't, can't wait to finally play this. I heard such good things about it. So oh, wait, good it's things. gone. Womp, womp. <laughs> it's that game. Uh, God, I gotta uh, talk about that really quick and then move on to the actual subject. It died so mm -hmm. fast that I didn't even know it was out. That's how quick it went down. Mm -hmm. Like everybody was uh, talking about how the new Sony game died, and I said, "What new Sony game?" <laughs> I don't, I don't well, to be fair to be fair you're 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 kind of in dad mode right now so like things are just going to keep going over your head yeah like, I, I feel like i'm out of my like, oh my god this and this and this and like hey what 
<laughs> it's like I, I walk out of my house and there's a new car crash every day right in front of me. Or I just walk out and I'm like, oh, the new Sony game's dead. There's a new Sony game? <laughs> oh, PS5 Pro is shit. There's a PS5 Pro? <laughs> it's just a barrage of insanity every day, including the yeah. stuff we're going to talk about today. Because um, I was late to the Nintendo Direct and didn't hear about Capcom <laughs> just throwing up on everybody. But in a good way. <laughs> and everyone else throwing up on Capcom. <laughs> Capcom throwing Child up games on you, and you're throwing going, up money. <laughs> I didn't, I did, I did not um, lose my cookies, but I was still pretty happy. <laughs> like holy it shit! It happens. Yeah, the NBC collection, uh, big, big news, big news for people who have been waiting for it ever to have NBC two back. And they were like, oh, we're going to give you NBC2 back, you son of a bitch. <laughs> we're going to give you NBC1 and 2. You're going to like it. And then all the um, X-Men versus Street Fighter games and everything like that. Oh, yeah, you're going to get those too. You're going to fucking like it. And everybody said, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, wait. And then like two months later, they're like, oh, you like that? Here's some more. <laughs> CBS1, CBS2, Power Stone 1, Power Stone 2. <laughs> Plasma Sword, Capcom Fighting Evolution, eh. So I much. can't tell you how many collect or how many uh reaction videos I watched where when Capcom Fighting Evo came up, everyone was just like, eh. Or other people were like, no, take it out, give us something else. <laughs> and I'm like, is it that bad? And then I went back and played it, and I'm like, yeah, it's that bad. <laughs> it's not very good. But no, Power Stone 1 and 2 and all these other games. I'm so hyped for Power Stone 1 and 2 because uh, I do own a Dreamcast, so that normally wouldn't be a problem, except uh, right now mine's being dumb. I think I'm going to have to open it up and see if I can't clean, clean the lens and get it working because it's not booting. Even if I wanted mm -hmm. to collect Power Stone 1 and 2, that's a problem. Along with that, have you tried collecting Power Stone 1 and 2? They're expensive. So instead, really? play it this way. I mean, they're not like bank breaking expensive, but Power Stone is that kind of game where you just play it for a little bit and you, you know you get your joy out of it and you're ready to walk away. I wouldn't call it um, a serious fighting game by any means. It's. it's are we more... talking like Dreamcast, or are we talking like? Because uh, the only way it was on a collection, it was on PSP. No, not a collection. I mean, if you want to get the individual okay. games on Dreamcast. Uh, not not bank-breaking. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, not bank-breaking. Average retail price is 50 bucks loose for the American version. Uh, Power Stone 2, uh, that's around 100. Yeah. So, and, and keep in mind, when they say loose, they can literally mean loose. Here's just the disc. Yeah. Fuck off. Just the disc, yeah. So, I don't want that. Most people don't want that. So they can't get pricey. Here's a great opportunity to be able to play those after all these years and just really have fun with them. Um, I had a great memory at uh, one year's SGC where we were just down there. <laughs> uh, maybe we had a drink or two. We were just playing Power Stone and going insane in, in there. After we were done with a little bit of a Power Stone, then we were playing PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, which is a good fighter. Shut up. <laughs> I, hey, I had I fun with PlayStation All Star Power Royale. Oh, chat, chat's probably. I mean, at least it say. didn't like it didn't like actually like uh, one to one copy Smash like a lot of Smash clones have in the past. And actually, tried to do something different. We're like, oh no, you actually have to charge up for super and then kill your opponent. You can't knock them off screen. Yeah, still knocking people off screen. And that's what you talk about. Yeah, and I don't think um, the implementation went all that well, especially because the balancing was just absolute garbage. But you know what? They tried something different. And I I, I respect the game, personally. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, yeah. any other game, like all they do is they just copy Smash. You know, you've got your uh, kill zone um, in the air. You've got your side kill zones. you got your bottom kill zone. That's it. Nothing special. Meanwhile, 
with PlayStation All Stars, you've got um, level one, two, and three uh, moves where you try to do KOs. And the problem uh, for anybody who hasn't played it before, sometimes the level ones on certain characters can KO multiple characters, no problem. Whereas the mm -hmm. level ones and other characters, you're going to get one. And that's all you're ever going to get. So that was a balance problem. Question in chat. Is it better than Nicktoons? Yes. God, yes. I have I'm... not played... I, I played the first Brawl, and I didn't really care for it. I have not played the second one. Two's better. It honestly is. Um, mm. I, it, It's playable. I would say if you're if you have that itch, definitely play it. Uh, if you want to compare it to multiverses, multiverses wins big time. But oh, it's yeah. still it's it's way more viable than one. One was just trash, absolute garbage. But that said, so we've got the collections. We got one collection coming tonight. Yeah. So it, it should super release. Excited there. I'm... I'm, mm -hmm. I'm ready to play. I'm ready to play that all day tomorrow. Uh, I might. I'm, I'm having. Oh, I might. No, I'm not. Might. I. I am having a stream of that. Like open lobby. Let's go. Let's play around with all the games. Uh, the other one. I don't know when that's coming out. It's funny is that we're getting them. They're digital now, and they're going to be physical in November. And I'm probably going to pick it up for one of the consoles physically because there's like this a limited edition comic book that comes with it. So I was like, yeah, okay, okay, you, you, you twisted my arm. I'll, I'll pre-order it and 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 get it That's for cool. one of the consoles. I don't know if PS4 or, or Switch yet. I haven't decided yet because like like I said earlier, I was because like, with Switch, I'm kind of like uh, trying. I'm trying to rebuild my collection collections. So like a anything that has like a like a compilation. I'm gonna get on Switch now because uh, the thing was is that NBC was not coming to Xbox because of the MT framework that they use to try and get all these old games working on modern consoles. It's like super outdated on the Xbox now, uh, so much more they don't support it. But apparently, uh, this was announced like last week or so. Actually, I think it was announced uh, as I was doing. Uh, I was playing through Fighting Evolution. That day, they tweeted out and said, we've heard you. We've talked to our partners at Microsoft. Uh, the MVC collection will be coming to Xbox. We figured it out. Uh, it's going to take a while. It won't be until 2025, but it's coming out. And then they also announced that for the Capcom Fighting Collection 2. They're like, yeah, we're going to bring that to Xbox as well. So nice. big ups to everyone over at Capcom. You're not, you know, leaving them out of the desk because, like, you know, we're all we're all starving for fighting games. And, you know, even though, like, you know, people like us, we've got all the consoles, right? You know. There's plenty of people out there that you know they pick one of the three and go. That's it. That's my that's my system. You know? Yeah. Not there's people who don't have as much privilege as us, and they they deserve a chance. This whole yeah. console war nonsense. It's just yeah. It's silly. Nobody from these uh, companies will ever get to know you. They might meet you sometime. They may tweet at you. That doesn't mean they know you. Yeah. Don't fight their wars. Don't do that. Yeah. Because like. I was uh, like growing up, like I was not a two console home, but I was a one console home, and I was always a console behind. So like, when the Nintendo was prominent, we had the twenty six hundred. That was our console. And then when the SNES came out, we had the NES. Like, no, we were we were we were we were, we were not we weren't we we're not po we weren't poor, but we weren't rich. We were kind of like in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And we just had everything when it was cheaper and it was hand me downs. But we still we appreciated all the time we had with that. Um, it wasn't until like the 64 when I started buying like consoles with my own money. <laughs> I think my by then my parents were done with that. It was just like, you want the Nintendo 64, you save up and buy it. Funny enough, that's when I learned uh, what the Ackerman uh, o OBO was or best offer. Mm. So I found an ad back in my day. We looked in the classified newspapers for video oh god, games. did you find it in the paper? I found it in the I found one in the paper guy at classified ad. He was just like. Yep, I um, got uh, the system, and I think he had like Mario and Shadows of the Empire, and he wanted two twenty five OBO, and I gave him exactly two twenty five and walked away. And my mother looked at me; she's like, "Do you know what OBO stands for?" I'm like, "No." She goes, "Or best offer. You could have gotten it for cheaper if you tried." I'm like, "Ah, oh, damn!" <laughs> and slowly but surely, I learned the art of haggling. Yeah, 
it's the art that if you're going to collect a bunch of stuff, you just you have to. Yeah. You have to. But I think um, yeah. first console I bought with my money was a uh, used PS1 from a pawn shop. I was able to get a sweet deal out of nice. that. But, nice. uh, so you're going to be uh, playing go uh, MVC tomorrow. You, you yeah. said you're going to be streaming it. It's going to be there. I assume that's going to be the one you're going to be playing the most MVC too, right? Uh, well, I mean, like, we'll, we'll go with whatever flows people's boats. If they want to try out the other versus games, we'll try that. If they want to go to MVC one, yeah. But I think MVC two will probably be like the key one because that one's like, you know, that's the one that everyone's been clamoring for to get back. Well, I mean, all of them really. Like, for the longest time, they've just been not available or really hard to come by. Like, probably think like X Men: Children of the Atom was only on PS one and Saturn. Uh, Marvel Superheroes versus Street Fighter. Uh, PS1. I think most of them have only been PS1 or, and Saturn. And a lot of them were probably just like Japanese only. Yeah. It's been and a long time. And then they would go like Dreamcast, maybe. Yeah. And then MCT, again, like the, the Dream, the PS1 Dream, uh, yeah. The PS1 and Dreamcast versions of MDC1 uh, are not really one to one with the arcade. Nope. At least my copy. Like I, I've got MVC on PlayStation, and because of like memory limitations, like there's missing frames, and also there's no tag system. Yeah, so you um, can't tag it out unless you do a crossover. So it's like, like if I pick Captain America and Venom, I'd have to go up against another Captain America and Venom before I can tag it in and out. Huh. That was such a weird mode. It's been but a I guess long was time since I played it. it. Yeah. And, I mean, that's that's exactly the point. I just said it. There we go. It's been a long time since I played it. Um, kind of, because I I did play it. Um, we have a free barcade in um, a town called Huntington. It's where uh, Marshall University is. That's where I went. And uh, free barcade, one of the con um, consoles, one of the arcade games they have is NBC One there. So you could go there and just play to your heart's yes. content. Uh, it's a little difficult because uh, these these machines have been beat up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they're old now. They've been beat up. So it's good to see that they're going to be coming back. Um, MVC2 specifically, one of the reasons why I was asking you about that is I was just curious. Are you, do you have do you have a build? Do you have a team that you're going to be introducing? Uh, I'm, I'm basic bitch. I'm just mostly like, just give me a team of three Shotos. So Ryu, Ken, Akuma, that's it. I don't, <laughs> maybe sometimes I'll throw Captain Spider-Man in there, but uh, I I don't know mix. I don't know team ups. I don't know mix ups. I don't know a whole lot of that stuff. I just play for fun. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not. I'm not looking to go to Evo. Here we go. See, he I, mean, I mean, I'm not. Okay, I'm not looking to go to Evo to compete. I am. So want to go to Evo just to go and absorb the culture and just hang out and have fun because like all the footage i've seen for this year's evo where they just they're in a new venue and everything's kind of changed up there like it's just i want to go there <laughs> i want to go there so bad now i'm the one knowing that stuff like this was coming up i saw um a video that was talking about let's go through the various uh lists of like tiers and what have you for mvc2 and i watched the entire thing or at least listen the entire thing while I was going through some chores. And um, I think some of the top tiers are a little surprising. So anybody who wants to get into the tiers and everything, there's like a top tier list, there's a god tier list, and then there's even a, a, a top tier for assists. Like the characters are kind of ass, but their assists are, are amazing. So I'm not telling you to go out and get sweaty. I'm just saying it's there if you want it. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh this has been a great year for fighting games. Of course, they're hyping up that next year is going to be amazing as well. We've got everything that Capcom is putting out. We've got um brand new Mortal Kombat. I don't know who exactly um has seen everything about that so far. If you've seen any of the uh, trailers for the characters, move sets, combos, or um any of the story. I know uh one thing that people were really wanting to see is a uh, noob cybots back, so that's good. Mm -hmm. um, and then some nitpicking I can do. So of course, more guest characters, more guest characters. We have um, Ghostface, <sighs> yeah. Conan the Barbarian. Uh, you, you need your horror representation in there somewhere. Yeah, I suppose you do when it comes to MK. But Ghostface, 
Conan the Barbarian, which is probably the weirdest pick. I forgot about that. Oh, my God. The weirdest. Absolute weirdest. And then, of course, um, equally kind of strange is the T-1000 from Terminator 2, which Hmm. people keep asking. I mean, we had Terminator last year. Sure. (laughs) But people keep asking what I consider to be a very good question. How do you how do you kill that guy? How are you gonna do that? Yeah. Unless you just pretend that for whatever reason he's solidified now, but that kind of kills the point of the character. I digress. What I, I was trying to get at here is I think when we have characters that are guest characters in fighting games, people get hyped the most when they're from stay with me now, other fighting games. I think people are just burnt out on uh, characters that are coming from this movie or that comic book or mm-hmm. what have you. It's been played to death. Everybody expects it from Mortal Kombat. And it's yeah, just, Netherrealm kind yeah. of... Ta- uh, when I think about it now, like, Netherrealm kind of does that, where their guest characters are like from all over the place. Like They'll pull them from their own series, and then they'll pull them from other franchises that Warner Brothers might have or might be able to license. With Street Fighter, it's just, no, we want you from a different series that we're kind of buddy-buddy with. In case of point, we're getting Terry and Mai from uh, King of Fighters. Mm-hmm. I think Terry comes out next week. Does he? Two weeks. That's, that's uh, a thing check. that uh, that's really, uh, I think, hyped everybody. is um, they're, they're excited to see Terry. Um, I, I know I am. Because um, King of Fighters, of course. I, I know Terry the most from the Fatal Fury series, because that's where I started with. But yeah, that is the hype train that's going on right now. And then, like, one of another big ones I can think of is Akuma in Tekken 7. Now, that was insane. Um, I was actually playing with that a little bit today. I know I'm I'm personally kind of garbage with Tekken. I'm sorry. I'm pretty terrible at it. But I, I was just playing around, trying to get uh, better with uh, Tekken. I was like, well... I'll play Akuma because I know that I could do things there. And yeah, he does everything you would expect him to do, plus, you know, uh, the Tekken style. And I found myself actually being able to pull off juggles. It, it started to finally feel good. You could juggle a bit into a Shoryuken, Dragon Punch. And it, it felt good. This felt like a good guest character. And it worked so well because they took the character from another fighting game brought him in and said you know this character already you played this character before try it out and see how it works worked wonderfully flawlessly yeah it was uh i i i distinctly remember i'm, I'm pretty sure that that's leftovers from the failed um uh, tech and cross street fighter game that never materialized probably yeah i mean it only we makes sense. Like, yeah Oh, uh, so yeah, Terry comes out this, uh, September 24th, so a couple weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, after that would be Mai and then Alina that. from uh, Third Strike. So, I know people are super hype about that. Uh, if you go into Street Fighter subreddit, however, and if you post, like, any sort of fan art of Terry right now, he, you're gonna get, it's gonna get uh, deleted. You have to wait two weeks, and then he's considered a Street Fighter character. But, but that's amazing. He's going to be a Street Fighter character. And from everything I've seen so far, he plays like Terry. It's the same Terry that we saw in Super Smash Brothers. That's what I'm talking about. You take characters that people already know from other fighting games, put them in your fighting game, especially make sure that they work the way people remember they should work. And my God, the formula is wonderful. Ryu plays like Ryu. Ken plays like Ken. Terry plays like Terry. It's it's just amazing. It works so well. And of course, we have <laughs> quite a few people in, in game days that can just thrash somebody <laughs> with with the mm-hmm. Shadow Fighters. I'm I'm okay with Terry, I guess. Oh, I was just thinking about this today too. Um, so, when is your earliest memory of like? clicking with fighting games uh because for me it would have been the super nintendo era like we had i had an arcade that had street fighter mm-hmm. uh but that one was usually 
filled up i could never get a chance to actually play on the cap the one i played the most on cabinets was uh mortal kombat like one two three ultimate three like that was my jam but like at home like it was always street fighter and you know the home versions of street fighter and mk yeah that's where i kind of started like getting into them and, and loving them well, I don't know. When you ask that, do you mean, like, when you say click with it, do you mean, like, do I have to be good? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I like this. I, I need more of this. Please give me more of it. Um, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Now, um, yeah, Turbo would have been the one for me, too, because, like, I never played the original until, like, later on because turbo was the one that was always at my um i used to rent games from a local gas station so turbo was the one that they always had on 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 lock well i never um, got super they never got super I, but they had got, they had got every version of mortal Kombat though i i rented super after it came out for a little bit but um there was a friend's house I went to. He had a Super Nintendo before I did, and he had Street Fighter 2. So that's where I got to, you know, check that out and see what that was about. And um, when I got my own Super Nintendo, and I, I remember I went out, and um, we knew that this uh, version, a new version of Street Fighter was coming out, and all the adults were hovering around it because they wanted a copy. I remember I saw it, and all the copies were gone, but I'm like, next time. I'm going to see what the hype is. Because all the adults are like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> Got to have it. So I'm like, what, what's what's the big deal? What's the hype? Because I saw Street Fighter 2. What, what's so different, Disco? So I was finally able to run it. And if I recall correctly, please remind me, guys, because old man brain happening here. Turbo allowed you to play uh, the boss characters too, right? Yes. So... Because with uh with Street Fighter Two is only the core eight, and then like, um, uh, Bison, Vega, Sagat, and uh, oh God, my brain, um, Balrog. Balrog. Yep. Yeah, they're they're they were just bosses you couldn't play as, yeah. and I think too with OG Street Fighter Two, you couldn't play, you couldn't do mirror matches. Correct. So it changed a lot of different things. Um, and, and for the better, too. So I, I remember I, I played a lot of Bison, or if you're from another part of the world, I guess we'll just call him Dictator. I played a lot of Dictator. <laughs> and uh, my God, I felt that he was just OP because Turbo made the game faster, and you could just Psycho Crush her over, 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 just Psycho Crush people to pieces. And it was just, it was it was fun. It was good fun. And being able to do mirror matches, checking out how the other boss characters played, and just having a faster experience in it. Yeah, it hooked me. It hooked me good. But in terms of what really got me going, I, I think everybody knows the answer. If they knew me well enough, at least. <laughs> I think everybody knows that. So if you don't know me that well, uh, there was this little series that came out that... Uh, everybody was really looking at because it was it was bizarre nobody ever seen anything like it before it was called uh mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. this wild thing that you would just hit your opponent and blood would fly out of them realistic looking characters and then oh my goodness did you hear about the fatalities they're killing guys <laughs> on there just right in front of each other they had this game in like we have um, a chain of comedian stores here in West Virginia called GoMart. And just about every GoMart I could recall back in the day, the fucking Mortal Kombat machine in there, people ripping out hearts with Kano and everything else, and just kids coming in buying candy. No big deal. So I know that infatuated me, and I was uh, pretty interested in that. And then when I got the home version, um, I was a Super Nintendo kid, so clearly got that version and and i still enjoyed it because it was still mortal kombat i didn't care if it was sweat i didn't need blood to make the game good point is you could yeah. get stuff done and play the game now was it as technical and um in depth as street fighter 2 turbo fuck no 
Mm-hmm. Fuck no. And I no one no one cared if it was, right? No one cared. That was just that different experience. And then I think um I started to be a little more mindful of arcade games and the fighting games that they had to offer. And I saw things like Time Killers. That was that's a big pile of junk. And just mm-hmm. other ones that I, I found interesting, but they just never really stuck with me like those two. Because there were things like Time Cures, King of Monsters, you know, the whole variety of like early nineties fighting games because everybody mm-hmm. saw that those two were making a dime and they wanted a dime too. There are so many. And there's so many I've never checked out because a lot of them are left in Japan on the Super Famicom. I think I have like something saved on my YouTube like watch later list where it's just like, here's like 125 fighting games on the SNES. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm going through it. It's like, yeah, I know that one. I know that one. I know that one. Wait, what the hell is that one? Oh, God, what is that one? <laughs> Some of them are just like, I have to check this out. And otherwise, I'm just like, oh, God, this looks janky as fuck. I have to try it. I got, I got a question for you. Uh, this is something that's been on my mind the whole time because we're like, the show is like, okay, I've got this as a topic. I want to talk about this. Uh-oh. Because as gr- growing up, we don't we don't have like the expendable money that we had back in the day, obviously. So, uh-huh. and plus mostly your parents bought most of the games for you, right? Right. And they try to get stuff tailored to your taste. And... You kind of stuck through it because, you know, that's all you had, right? Did you ever get a fighting game that you knew in your heart was bad, but you played it so much because you didn't have anything else that you tricked yourself into thinking it's good? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, fuck, I could it? not remember. I cannot remember the name of this thing. Okay, you... you, you yeah, you think about it, I'll tell you mine. Um, yeah, go ahead. Double, so I can Dragon, double Dragon 5. Oh my god, yes, I, I have Double Dragon that one too. 5 on this thing. Oh, yeah, sh- double Dragon 5 was so bad, like so broken. Because, like, the thing was, too, is that it was based off of the, that anime, the animated series yeah. that was on, uh, like, USA. Or, I never got here in Canada, so I didn't know it was based on a cartoon. That was just like, okay, this is like we had one, two, and three on. Uh, the NES, then we had Super Double Dragon, so everyone treated that as four, so I guess this is five. Then they come find out, technically there is no Double Dragon 4, then Arc System Works made Double Dragon 4, and it's not very good, <laughs> because they're just like, ah, people like Double Dragon 2, let's throw those NES sprites in there, make that a game. Uh, now, before, before you God, just tear is... into it, before you tear mm-hmm. into it, can you at least admit to me that the opening theme on that is badass? It's okay. Oh, come on. Trade West had some... Uh, I don't know if that was Trade West. I don't know who developed that game. It, uh, it wasn't Rare. I think Rare was finally getting away from uh, doing Double Dragon games. But yeah, like, it was one of those things where it was just like... It was the only fighting game I owned at the time. Because, like, Street Fighter 2, Turbo, we would rent. Um, our friend in, uh, uh, in town had Super... On, SNES, on the SNES. Mm-hmm. And then we would write Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 uh, and Ultimate 3 whenever we could. Uh, yes. I think I'm frozen on stream there. Oh, it's it happened because I tabbed. Oh, there you My go. bad, guys. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's weird. Anyway, um, so I, like, I, I don't know how we obtained Double Dragon 5. Either I don't know if my mother bought it or I bought it because it was at, like, some weird discount store. Where it's like in one of those like plastic hangy things. And so it's just like great SNES game. And then you see this, it's like, oh, a brand new SNES game for 20 bucks or something. So we bought it and it was oh god, like my brother and I like we're trying to figure we, we were this was actually the time where like I couldn't get any info in the game, so we actually were sitting there trying to learn the moves and then we would write them down. And I was like, all right, ice pick, I think is like the best character, and you know, he throws the ice, so he's more like sub zero, and that'll be my main. Was, Oh, this is god awful. I might actually, <laughs> <laughs> I might boot that up again sometime. Oh, I, I've got a terrible story with that one, but that's not the one that came to mind. Now, my terrible what story with that. See, I, I didn't pay attention to the cartoon show, and I didn't know what was going on. So, it was cheap at my local blockbuster. It was a used game, and I, I had some money. And mom's like, "Oh, you can, 
get what you want there. I saw that and I'm like, I like Double Dragon. I'm gonna get that. This should this could be a cool Double Dragon game on on Super Nintendo. Yeah, no one told me. Then it was that shit. <laughs> no one no told one me it was you. that. Oh, nobody warned me. There was not a game magazine out there one that at least I had that warned me about that because that was an insult to the senses. That was an assault to the senses. Um, let's see, Chad, who still has their copy of Shaq Fu? Never owned one. Me either. Never owned one. Never did. Never wanted to. No, um, the one I could think of, because I picked it up and I'm like, it's really cool. The characters are cool. I want the game to be cool, but it's fucking not. Um, Dark Rift on Nintendo 64. Ooh. Now, the cool thing about that it, era of fighting games. Yeah. <laughs> Williams and Midway were like, this 3D tech from World Combat 4 is so great. We should do all our fighting games in this. And then we got Dark Rift, War Gods. Yes. Bio yes. Freaks. So it ran at um, a really good um, frames per second. It ran smooth 60s. So that was cool. <laughs> and it had like, um, God, this one character that was just like, I don't know, a giant shard machine. So you could just stab the shit out of people. Just spin around. It was like um, MK11 Frost on crack, guys. It was crazy. But overall, this game was so ass. I wanted it not to be. So I, I think I played and finished it with uh, various characters a relentless amount of times. And still can say to this day, eh, it wasn't good. <laughs> it, just, it really was no good at all, unfortunately. Oh. Ugh. There's another one I had of that, and I'm kind of ashamed to say it because it's from a series that I like. Um, but I had the Game Boy version of Ki <laughs> because I couldn't because I couldn't afford the SNES version with Killer Cut CD, <laughs> and I had to like because I think there's like I think Cinder was missing from the roster. We had like a, a, all the other characters except Cinder and maybe one more I can't remember. But it's like this is the version you have, so you better use it. I will say though that. It made very good use out of the Super Game Boy because it gave it some color and also two player support. No. So I can give the controller my brother, hey, here, fight me. And it's like, uh. I actually was attempting to do uh, a Maximilian dude style boss rush on that. And I was like, oh, he hasn't done, he's done boss rush on everything else, KI. Why not uh, the Game Boy one? It's like, hey, wait, I'll do it. And I got to like the fourth guy. And like, what is this program that I can't pull off any moves? I picked Thunder and I try spamming like like the Russian for his combo and it's like he's blocking it and giving me an ultra like oh god like that, yeah this is not happening so that was one of the ones where like it's funny because that's one of the few times like oh you can't do fighting games on a Game Boy I'm like eh, depending you can like KI like it wasn't that bad like for a Game Boy game it's insane that that even ran on Game Boy like Okay, sure. Mortal Kombat uh, was on Game Boy and everything, but I mean that wasn't. Oh. It was Mortal Kombat, That's whatever. Of uh, Ki actually had like a full on combo system and everything going for it. So it's it's amazing to me that they were able to get it on the Game Boy and do fucking anything besides roll over and play dead. Like, did it play as a decent one for one, or was it just awful? I don't know. It it, it was decent. You know, for for what I had there, it was decent. It was like, well, it's just you know, just what you have. You know, you can't get the Super Nintendo versions to just get the Game Boy version. I liked it. Like you can pull off the combos. I gotta try it. The only problem is, is that it's like I think it's like tapping A and B uh, does like weak punches, and then holding the button would do your um, do your heavies. I don't think I learned that. Me That's probably why I was losing, is I I didn't know that mechanic. I was like, oh, what's going on with fuck. this? I... I totally forgot about that. Yeah, there's another problem. The system has two fucking buttons. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it would have the same for MK as well, which... That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess maybe I, I... It's been a while since I've watched the episode of HVGN. How the fuck do you block in Mortal Kombat for Game Boy? How do you block? I don't know. Select? <laughs> DNA that would together? be awful. That would be so bad. That would be so bad. If that that's is the a, a good question. I'll find that out. Because typically, so, uh, that's, okay. 
that's another thing that makes Mortal Kombat weird. It's like one of the few games on the planet that has a block button. Most of them you just press or hold yeah. back. That's always no, been... No, no, chat is saying he thinks it's uh, start the block. That seems so awful. And yes, I have Mortal Kombat on Game Boy. Oh, boy. Game Boy. That sounds not fun. I will tell you, though, that uh, there is this crazy fun uh, fighting game that was on Game Boy Color, uh, only exclusive to Japan, uh, that was based around uh, the Japanese version of Beast Wars. I can't remember the full name of it. I did a playthrough of it not too long ago. Like, funny enough, like, it, it's mechanically sound for a two button. Like, you know, you've got you've got your punches and kicks, you've got supers, and because it's Transformers, it's a transformation, so you can go from robot mode to beast mode or car mode. Because, like, I don't know how the Japanese version of Beast Wars works because, like, like there's there's Beast, but then there's also Autobots and Decepticon. I don't know. Japan had a weirder version than we did here in America. They've got a All lot right, of look weird up the, stuff uh, over there. Like, I, I just had a, a uh, new collection of stuff come in today. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, it, yeah, it's B and A to block. You have to hold both uh, face buttons to block. That's awful. So how do you do a high punch or a high kick? How does that even work? Um, would be only when in close quarters. Only <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's crouching. Yeah, crouch. Uh, hold down and B. And <laughs> down A is a crouching kick. Wow. And you got aerial moves. Yeah, it's a little weird. That sounds like it would just yeah. be. Very annoying yeah. to deal with. That Beast Wars one, though, that's one I kind of found through um, just searching uh, and for the wonderful world of emulation. That's how I found out uh, a couple of other great fighters from back in the day. Like, did it, did that ever happen to you? Like, if you were scouring the internet and you just found this random ass game and was like, oh, okay, this is a shot, and it turned out to be like a pretty decent fighter. Like, not that that would be ever be at like Evo or anything, but. You were just like, yeah, yeah, this is pretty, pretty sound. I can't say I have because anytime I, I get out there and find something I think looks cool, it's not great in the end. Like, I'm sorry to say, guys, but fighting game wise, I kind of like Clay Fighter. I think it's fun. I know mechanically, I it's found it garbage to be really janky. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, gameplay wise, it's garbage, but it's, it's fun. I liked it. Uh, Clay Fighter 2 also was... I enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty good. When we get to the 64 era in 64, um, Abandon All Hope, he who popped mm -hmm. that cart, because that when it, that's when it gets just inexcusably bad. But I'll let you know, um, going back to the whole emulation thing, there was a time there where... Um, my brother and I just got the the classics all downloaded. We're like, all right, we got we, we got we need. we got you know we got Zelda, we got Donkey Kong, we got you know all the heavy hitters, and just started like browsing through sites and people's collections. And then we saw this one, and we're like, what is this? Download it. Can't read Japanese or anything, but one that stuck with me is so great. It's Gundam Wing Endless Duel. Ooh. So it was developed by Natsume. Uh, so if you've ever played Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Fighting Edition. Yes, it plays similar to that, but just a little bit faster because you're not dealing with like big bulky swords. You are dealing with uh, you know uh, mechs, but uh, um, it, it's 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 crazy good. And this is before I even knew what a Gundam was. Uh, this is before Gundam Wing actually got their um, their English dub out there. So my brother and I just found this, and this is just crazy. Now for the faint of heart, like if you are prone to epilepsy or your foes has to do not play this game because every time you went around like flashing lights is crazy oh i believe it <laughs> yeah. seems to be a lot of that i i just learned the other day that like doki doki panic can cause can cause epilepsy because the waterfalls really fast 
Really? Yep. Interesting. Yep, the waterfalls. I didn't think so something fast. like that would trigger. They they move so fast that it is kind of like light on light off very rapidly. Oh they, wow! Uh, okay. They slowed it down in um, what we got. Yeah. And they actually kept it that way in um, Super Mario All Stars, the Japanese version, because I actually got that as part of my collection today and tested it. Interesting. So they they realized it was a problem and they fixed it in uh, the version that came over here too. In Super Mario USA, mm -hmm. it, they've slowed the the waterfall down, as they should, because you don't want to be doing that. Mm -hmm. That's that's no. no good, guys. It's no good. Um. I got to ask you this before we wrap it up because I think we'll probably do a part two in this. You know, we we don't want to keep this going yeah. too long because got work in the morning and all that. But I want to talk really quick about Street Fighter Five because uh, this was definitely a hot button issue last year, and there's been a year at this point. We've had mm -hmm. time pass. I know Justin Wong has proven a few things about it and everything. Do you think? That using modern controls in Street Fighter VI is um, shackling yourself, holding yourself back. Is it as good as someone who knows how to play classic? Ah, uh, it's hard to say because, like, I only played around with modern controls like for maybe ten minutes at launch, and I didn't, I didn't care for it just because it's like I've, I've grown up with like six button and eight button controls. So, like, I'm more accustomed to uh, playing it like that. But, I mean, like, for someone that's new to fighting games, especially Street Fighter, and just wants to be able to moderately hang with people and not have to worry about all these different button inputs, so they can just go, like, all right, I'm going to do my heavy, boom, 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 and that brings out a combo. I think that's fair. As, like, I, I, I love the trade-off of it, though, is where modern controls... If you're if you're going to stick to that, you're going to be at a slight disadvantage because your damage output is going to be lower versus someone who's playing classic and who can pull off those combos. Uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, like it's it's welcome. I, I think there's another control style called dynamic. I've never seen anyone use dynamic at all. I don't even know what it is. I don't know anything. That's something about I have to look into it. No, I don't know anything about that. But um, so here's what I've learned, and here's um why I decided to ask you that because mm. a lot of people don't realize like, you know, you've got classic, you've got modern, but a lot of people can play in a hybrid style, which believe it or not is what I've learned to do. So the hybrid style is when you're playing a character, you know how to do like uh, the modern combos and you know what inputs are what, but you can also manually enter those inputs. So if you want to manually enter them, and get like a special that does normal damage while you're just firing off with the other ones, you can do that. And okay. that's that's something I, I've been learning to do with jury. Like I'm I'm pretty quick, pretty quick, and I, I'm learning how to get better. And then yeah, modern geef is a monster, like Worm Man says. So Geef, it's a little hard to pull off a lot of his stuff because you've got to do the rotations and whatnot. And modern game, you, you don't have to worry about those rotations. You're just firing off, coming after him. So that's definitely helpful, too. I found that it it's helpful. I, I don't know if sometimes I don't get my wins because I'm on modern. I'm just not getting the damage. But I feel like I'm, I'm far more in control, and I know how to work the character to the, to the best of my ability using modern. Which I know um, is limited, but still something you can do. Now, I guess the big question is, do you think that it like limits you as a player? Because full disclosure, guys, I don't have a single character out of silver. I am very, very casual. That's a good question. Like I, the only person I have uh, put any time into ranked has been Ken. And honestly, I don't know what my rank is. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna boot it up real quick there, if you can, and I'll let you know there. Yeah. I think I hit. I th honestly, I think I hit a wall at rank, and I just kind of just was like, you know what? That I, I think I'm good. I was gonna see if like how long it would take me to grind the master, but uh, after a while, I think I was gonna. It, I think it was gonna oh. take me way too long. 
The grind to master can be insane. Like, I, I've seen so many people complain about how just brutal the grind ends. And unless you're like Justin Wong, because I think that he has gotten multiple characters to master using modern just to prove that it was viable and it could be done. But yeah, I think he has the whole roster on there. Yeah. On, he, uh, I don't think he uses modern. I think he's just on classic. I think he's just played. Yeah, he, he typically uses classic, but for some of his videos, he was showing how modern can be played. So he's tried it with both, but uh, he was the first player in the world to get all characters to master. And that's because, I mean, he's a streamer. He's good at the game. Yeah. It's going to happen. He's not the best in the world. Yeah, that, that definitely helps. <laughs> he he certainly right. don't, well, doesn't have to worry six, about uh, Dark Side well, Phil for competition. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone has to worry about their <laughs> serious competition. Anyway, um, yeah, it's going to take a second for this to load up here. Yeah, like, there was one time there was just, like, on my off time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to see how far I can take Ken. Because I was, I, I feel like I was pretty decent with him. And then I start, and, then, and at one point there, I just hit a wall. But I, I was more in uh, battle hubs, just playing, ca uh, just playing casually, uh, because I was trying to get my free pass there because they were going to give you a bison hat and I, I, for my avatar. Uh, okay. Is there any way to see your ranks without having to pull up anything? Uh, you have to go to the character and just um, go to the character select by pressing X and then you can uh, see what you have for each character. All right. We start That's training. Saying. Just about all characters oh. I have silver. There's a few that I really haven't played that much with, therefore I haven't done that well. But well, I, I, I think Cammy. oh I was uh I was considering going with Cammy. Hmm. See. Not a bad choice. Cammy's a top tier character. Uh Tammy I uh, Tammy Ken Ken Cammy Um Jury Geef. Is that it? No, for it doesn't top? show you. Or is uh the the new poison character, the new Fung, is uh is she in top tier as well? Um uh, Aki? Yeah. I don't think so. Uh I'm a there. five star iron. A five star iron. Okay. But I think so... I need another thirty to get to silver, maybe. Yeah, you, you didn't put a lot of time into... into no, it was more like, right. eh, okay. That's all right. No, it's just, there's just there's so much other stuff to play right now. Like, like the other thing on that Nintendo Direct, if I can figure out of fighting games for a little bit, is we got the Castlevania DS collection. We got all the three DS games on of Castlevania. Like, my my Xbox is, like, basically an, a Castlevania machine. I have, like, every Castlevania possible, except for uh, Rondo of Blood that's on ps4 but still like i have everything it's crazy yeah it, it's a really good time for games and if you're someone who wants to complete a game before you go to the next one uh heaven help you because <laughs> there's going to be so many things tempting you so many things flying everywhere because there's um like you said there's that we've got the collection releasing tonight if anybody's seen the new Astrobot, it looks amazing. Gameplay looks fantastic. So many things. So many things. But I think we're getting a little long in the tooth, and we may keep this for a round two next discussion. That's a pure game. You want to throw your quarter down? Anyway, I think that is going yeah. to take care of it for this edition of the reset button. Um, any last thoughts before we wrap up? I like fighting games. I love fighting <laughs> games. I didn't even get a chance. We love fighting games so much that we had so much to talk about. I didn't even get a chance to talk about tournament fighters. TMNT tournament fighters. That's why we'll I say think, that for a part two. <laughs> I think we're going to have a part two. I think we have to have a part two. And yeah. then uh, it makes sense to have a part two because we got to get Liz's opinions on these things. Yeah. 
So there you go. That is going to be our next dis discussion. We're going to come back and have uh, part two of our fighting game discussion. We're going to bring Liz in here. We're going to make her insane. I don't know how much she likes uh, fighting games, but <laughs> she's going to talk fighting games because she can't escape us. That's how it rolls. <laughs> that said, guys, uh, thank you so much for coming out and checking us out. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.